greetings from Bishop Aubrey Shines and G2G Ministries in Tampa, Florida. We pray that you would be blessed and encouraged by the biblical message you are about to hear. Today's classic sermon from Bishop Shines is part eight of What Stage of Maturity Are You? with reference to scripture Hebrews chapter five, verses 11 through 14 in the Amplified Classic Translation. your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness of conformity to the divine will and purpose, thought and action. Why? For he is a mere infant, not able to speak. But solid food is for full-grown people, for those whose senses and mental have what? Trained by practice to do what? To discriminate and to distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. Grab someone by the hand before you take your seat. Before you take your seat, look at him or her. Eyeball to eyeball. uh, Eyeball to eyeball. Tell them this. Say, you and I are called according to the 14th verse to know how to discriminate, to distinguish Between what is good, what is noble, tell them this is a sign you are spiritually mature. Amen, as you take your seat. Last week I gave you something. I want us to go back to it because I'm not finished and I I want to make sure you get it. I told you I spoke with a medical friend And I wanted to know from him what are some of the side effects or some of the symptoms of a person that cannot have strong meat. And he kind of gave me some direction of, 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 of how I should understand this from a medical doctor's perspective. And it really blessed me. It helped me tremendously. Even though his area is in the area of oncology, dealing with cancers and a whole lot of other abnormalities that are in the body, he was able through his, his training to uh, kind of give me some lessons here. And I wanted to share these with you, but I'm going to give you the natural portion, but I want you to see the spiritual implication to it. Because again, I want to make sure that you get this. Everyone look at pastor and please repeat these words with me. Say, according to the word of the Lord. Come on, look at pastor one more time. Say it with me. Say, according to the word of the Lord. Say one of the signs of maturity or stage three is that I can handle strong meat if I cannot handle strong meat according to the word of the Lord even though I may have been in church forever I'm still a spiritual infant let's go into the word here I want to give you something I gave you on last week that one of the attributes of not being able uh, uh, was to uh, uh, I, I shared this with you out of second Corinthians that what meat does according to the physician is the, the wrong consumption or the body is not dealing with it, it can cause high blood. But I gave you scripture for that. I also dealt with that one of the other signs of your, your system not able to handle meat is when your body maintains it. It won't eliminate it, so it holds on to it. And I gave you scripture for that as well uh, because that is a sign that a lot of people deal with when you want to know whether or not you're spiritually mature And again, I I do want to highlight this one just real quick. I won't stay here as I did on last week, but there it is. So if you didn't get the notes, please take it real quick. If you are a believer and you always hold on to things that have happened to you, you're not ready for strong meat. That is a sign you're a spiritual infant because mature believers don't hold on to stuff. It don't mean that you don't get hit with it doesn't mean that bad things don't happen to you. But when you hold on, how do I know I'm holding on? When you can't let it go. When, when, when you can't let certain things go that have happened, you've not growing or you have not grown yet spiritually. According to the 14th, 15th verse, 14th, I'm sorry, 13th, 14th verse, you're still a spiritual infant. Someone hurts you, you can't let it go. 
You'll never forget it. I may be saved, but I put my religion on the back wall. That's a sign of immaturity. It may sound cool, may sound great, but you're not growing up yet. And again, I, I can't help but to emphasize this over and over. You cannot receive certain things as a spiritual babe from God when you act like a child. That's just in the book. I wish I had time to go over it again and again and again. But uh, how many are parents out here, grandparents, uncles, aunts, or you're just over someone's life? How many know as much as you may love that little small person that's been in your life, when they're too small, you won't give them the keys to the car? Not that you don't love them. They're just not ready for the keys to the car. Our spiritual father is not going to give you certain things that you cannot handle. I don't care if it's money, promotion, whatever it is. Because if you can't be what he wants you to be where you are, in the state you are in, promoting you is only going to hurt you. Because you just think you got it because you have the right connections. Sometimes things won't happen in our lives, not because God the Father doesn't want to bless us, it's just because we're not ready to handle it. I can look back at my own life. Let me be transparent. Even as it relates to ministry. There were things as an evangelist that I prayed for often. But I did not get. I thought I was qualified. I knew the word of the Lord. At least in my head. But I had not lived out enough experience to be able to do certain things. I could preach. I understand and understood basic hermeneutics and homiletics, and I, I got it. But I wasn't ready to go certain places. I was an evangelist called by God, but there were some, certain arenas I would have crashed in that I was hoping to get to. God didn't allow it to happen until the proper time. Looking back at it, had I gone in there too early as a novice, not having enough experience, I probably would have done more damage than good, even though I was preaching the scripture. I could not then look at the people that did not open up those doors and be mad at them because it was God that was saying, son, you ain't ready. I couldn't hear it because I had my own desire. Touch someone and tell them, your desire needs to equal God's desire. Some blessings some of you all are not ready for. I know you pray all the time. But some things are not going to happen in your life, not because God doesn't love you. He loves you so much that he gave his only son for you. Now, if that ain't love, I don't know what love is. Because if somebody's to die for you, don't tell me they don't love you if that was the purpose of them dying. They love you enough to die. But they also love you enough to not let you make shipwreck in your life of things that you are not ready to handle. And so there are some spiritual applications that belong with strong meat that some of us not. If you cannot receive correction, you're not growing and you're not mature. If every time someone says something to you to help you, to correct you, you get mad at them. Don't leave, Ryan. I know you're getting upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's my son. Uh, I can't help it. People move. I just, you know, and I come right back to the point. I don't have ADD like that. So the reality of it is, is that when we cannot receive correction, and again, that doesn't, and I better put a, I better put a mark there. That is not your job to go, look, everyone look at pastor. Put your hand on your heart. Don't look at your neighbor. Say, it ain't my job, come on, to go around correcting folk. I want all my leaders, my elders to stand up. Every elder stand up, please, real quick. Elder Morgan, where are you at? All of my elders stand, please. Stand, stand, stand. This is what I want y'all to understand. Everyone look around these elders that are here and the elders that just come in as well. When there's correction in the ministry, I have these men and women set. So don't take it upon yourselves to go do it. I'll go further. These leaders, if they have the right spirit, are not going to go out and put out every fire also that they see. Because maturity says sometimes you got to let people grow through a thing in order to get healed. All right? Y'all can be seated. Thank you so much. So when we cannot receive a proper instruction because we think we are above it, it's not a good sign that we're mature. I got to go. I, I, I got to get you here. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Let me give you a few more things. I gave you that, 
but I wanted to leave. I'm not going to give a lot of definition with this one, because uh, scripture, because you, I've already given this one. But please write this. Another sign that a person cannot digest meat properly, strong meat that is. And I said this last week because you'll see the dark circles under their eyes. Usually it's a, that's physical, but the spiritual application is it really means, according to the scripture Hebrews and the book of Corinthians, it means they don't have the ability to understand and see things. A sign of maturity is being able to see spiritually what's really going on. Listen, if you got to put things together like some kind of analytical puzzle and you put piece by piece or you got to Google what a dream means, that's not maturity, honey. You're going by some Freudian dynamic of what behavior is about and not understanding is spiritual. When, so again, when you see dark circles under a person's eyes, often, according to my friend, he says that's often a sign that meat is not digesting, the proteins are not digesting in the body properly. Now, again, there's some other reasons, but that's another sign. Let's go to the next one and a fresh one. Let me give you a new one. Please write this down. When a person, according to him, and I want to pull up Romans 12 and 3 while, you, while I'm saying this, Another sign that a person, according to the 13th, 14th verse, can handle strong meat is when the meat produces a stench and an odor in the body. Man, that's kind of deep, isn't it? But some of y'all didn't know. I don't know why I smell this way. I shower. Come on, y'all mature. Let's talk, people. Don't, don't, don't let this moment escape because it sounds, ooh, that's deep. I didn't know we were going to learn all this stuff in church. Well, you need to learn it. Somebody didn't tell you at your house. <laughs> Often, too much meat in the body produces. It will excrete through your pores. And there's an aroma. It doesn't mean that you're not clean. It just means that that protein is coming out a certain kind of way. It's not digesting properly. Well, make that spiritual to me. Let's go to Romans 12 and 3, please. Let's pull it up. Romans 12 and 3. But, so, nope, that's not it. Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12, let me go to it. Maybe they're having some technical difficulties. Oh, there it is. All right. I love this. For by the grace, what is grace? Is favor that you didn't earn. It's called unmerited favor. For by the grace, which is unmerited favor of God, given to me, I warn every one of you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought to, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith appropriated by God to him. One of the signs of a foul odor in your life is when you rate your ability without any balance. It comes off in your demeanor. It's, please write this down, when you condescend to people, with your facial expression, you are not operating with a sense of sobriety. You're not being sober. Everyone look at Pastor real quick. I'll let you write in a moment. You ever talk to someone and you can tell that you didn't had your turn or they have their turn, then it's your turn. But when it's their, your turn, they may not open up their mouth, but they do something like this. <laughs> your body is stinking. I'm making it spiritual, people. Again, when you condescend with, oh man, I'm trying to help some of y'all here. You ever have people talk to you through their body? They don't have to open up their mouth, but it's how they do their body. You know they've already checked out. That's the Romans 12, 3. You're not mature because that's not how maturity looks. When you got to roll your eyes, when you got to, I ain't going to even do that thing with my neck. I may get a crook or something in the neck. When you got to move your neck, that's a sign of your arrogance. And what you're doing is, or <laughs> I watch some people, they may not do anything, but they'll make a sound. Their body produces a sound effect. You say something to them, and under their breath, you can hear, <laughs> come on, look over at your neighbor and just go, <laughs> Tell them that's not mature, darling. When you cannot listen without expressing, your body 
is saying, I'm not full of milk, a meat rather. I'm still a milk drinker. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not stage three. Come on, put those three fingers up. And now take that finger go, you either one or you still in number two. Because people that respond with body odor, I'm not talking natural, I'm speaking spiritual. When people respond, that means that you have already disconnected from whatever you're speaking of. And as a result, it is also a sign you're not mature. Tell your neighbor, that's deep. I'm glad you think so. I'm going to give you another scripture. It just came to me. Let me see. Can I find this here? Oh, man. I, it, just, it just came to me. I, I, I pray that this helps you here. Yep. Think I got it. Turn with me really quick. Really, really, really fast. I want to give you another one. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. I want to give you another one for this body odor. Because people really do recognize your position by your outward demeanor. They, they just do. 2 Corinthians 10 Verse 12 through verse number 13. Again, dealing with the spiritual body odor here. Look at it. Not that we have the audacity to venture to class or even to compare ourselves with some who exalt and furnish testimonials for themselves and, and just keep it up. There were groups of believers that were going around dealing with their own testimonies. How great they were. Let me tell you how the Lord and, and if you fought, this is why the Lord, they were, they were boasting on themselves with their, not with God's word, with their own testimony. I wanted y'all to have a scope of this because Paul is here in the church of Corinth. And this is so important. You always hear me say this. People study the churches in scripture and you'll find out the church that was in the city of Corinth, for whatever reason, God had really gifted these guys and girls. They, the, Paul said, as it relates to spiritual gift, they came behind with none. They were like the creme of the creme. They were super gifted. And so they had to sing because they were so gifted. Come on. That they would go around boasting and, and throwing off on themselves. In other words, they meet another church from another city or people that weren't part of their church. And, they, and I'm not talking about a local church because the church in Scripture is not like we do church today. People, believers got together. Man, this is teaching in here. People got together because there was an apostle that set a pastor in the house. And there was, I, oh Lord, I'm going to go all the way here now. Just keep the Scripture up. Do you know you couldn't leave Church A in Corinthians and go over to Church B without that apostle's release? It wasn't no, I feel led of the Lord. They would put your hind parts out. They would go, what do you mean? Go back to where you come from. I don't like the pastor. Is he a heretic? No, he's not. Is he under the auspices of the apostle? Yes. Then ain't no leaving. You stay and you stay put. And you work out your soul's salvation according to the scripture with fear and with trembling. There wasn't no hopping around. I want a position. I can't get one. I went over to Pastor Shine's church. They wouldn't recognize my gift. Therefore, I went over to Mount Pisgah Elementary of the Methodist Diocese of the St. John Baptist First Primary. It was, that stuff didn't happen, folk, in this day. These folk were serious about your relationship with the Lord. And they made sure you were planted and dealt with your stuff. So Paul was dealing with them. He says, look, he says, not that we have the audacity to venture to class or even to compare ourselves. Now, Paul is speaking as an apostle, and he's speaking about the other leaders. But note how he does this, because he's dealing with the whole thing of dealing with meat and whether your body is responding a certain kind of way. He says, to venture to class or even to compare ourselves with some who exalt and furnish testimonials of themselves. Notice there's an exclamation point there. However, he says, when they measure themselves with themselves and compare themselves, the King James says, by themselves, because what they were doing was they would have their little group and they were so Gnostic in their behavior, they would kind of say, hey, check out me and Reg. We got the stuff. And so they never compared themselves by the word, but they would look at each other and compare themselves by themselves. And so they were the creme of the creme in their own mind. Man, y'all going to get this here in a minute. However, when they measure themselves with themselves and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding and they behave how? Let's go to the next verse. You need to see it. We, on the other hand, would not boast beyond our legitimate province and proper limit. 
but will keep within the limits of our commission, which God has allowed it to us as measuring, as our measuring line, and which reaches and includes even you. So note what the apostle said. He said, we're not above you guys. We just know what our callings are. But we're not going to, in other words, we, there's a group of apostles. We're not going to even measure ourselves with us. But we're going to identify with you. So if you hurt, we hurt. If you rejoice, we rejoice. If you in trouble, I'm in trouble. If you hungry, I'm hungry. If I have and you don't have, then you do have by measure I do have. That Paul said is a sign. He said anything else, watch this. You can go back to the prior verse. He says, but when your testimony is about you, that's not a sign that you're mature. You can't handle me because you're boasting on yourself. My ministry, what God did for me, how God led me. I'm not listening to no other man. I put on my shoes the same way they I put on my pants one leg at a time just as he, he ain't above me. You arrogant little milk drinker. You little infant you. The moment you have to compare yourself by someone. Do you know our job is to serve one another? I can't get help here. Our job is to pray for one another. Our job is to say, you know what? What's going on with you? How can I help? What can I do to make your life better? It's not about me. It's about you. It's not about you. It's about your neighbor. Touch someone sitting to your right and left. Say, I got to do better showing you who I really am. In Jesus, that is. Come on, touch one other person and tell them, I just got to do better in this area. That's all. Let me give you two more real quick. I, I want to go through this really quick. There's another sign <clears throat> that strong meat is not wearing well with you. Write it down. Write this one down. It's called fatigue. Some people eat a lot of meat and they are fatigued. Can I give you a scripture? Turn with me to Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6, verse number 9. I want everyone to see this because this is fatigue. Again, what he said to me was when too much meat or meat is not processing in the body, it makes anybody ever eat a lot and they go home and sleep? <laughs> how, how many nap folk I have in here? Y'all get that meal? Can we talk? Can y'all handle real talk? How many know when you done over eight? That, that sleep thing hits you. You can be up in the middle of a conversation. And you know I would. <laughs> you ever hear anybody wake themselves up? Come on. Y'all need to deal with. I'm, I'm trying to show you something naturally. I want you to see this. Sometimes it's too much. You ain't digesting properly. There are reasons for that. I ain't even going to deal with that today. Because if we didn't do it, should I become a vegetarian? Well, that's between you and God. I'm not. <laughs> and don't write me no silly Bible stuff. Well, in the beginning, they ate herbs. That does not give you a reason to smoke reefer. If you're going to smoke herb, why don't you smoke poison ivy? That's a weed. <laughs> smoke aloe vera. I got you. you see, y'all laugh, but you have no idea what people say to me. And Pastor, I just feel you know, herb is in the scripture. It's also giving your brain burnout. All right, let me go back. Let me go back. And so, too much meat, not properly digest, make you nappy. <laughs> <laughs> You ever see somebody in the car, you driving with them, you done had a good meal, and their head catch themselves? <laughs> How many been to Thanksgiving dinner, and they, I don't, care, I don't care if there's a game going on. Everybody can be excited. Come on, Ryan, talk back to me, son. And then all of a sudden, you look over, and they done got a certain position. They done moved their leg all up on top of the roof. <laughs> and be like, no, I'm good. And the next thing you hear from old Ken, and they done woke themselves up. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you're not digesting meat the right way. 
But can I show you the spiritual implication? Come on, let me show you what fatigue looks like in scripture. Look at this. And let us not lose heart and become weary. Fatigue, that's the same word. Don't become fatigued and faint and acting nobly and doing right. Man, this is, so, this is such a powerful scripture. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and keep that scripture up. Keep it up for just a moment. I need you to see what spiritual fatigue looks like. Look at it again. Paul is warning the church over here in the city of Galatia. He said, look, when you're doing good, every believer, y'all need to hear this. Because some of y'all will miss it because you get taken advantage of at your jobs. Can we really go here? Can y'all handle this? This is just some meaty stuff, people. Pun intended, by the way. Sometimes you get mistreated in your home. Maybe who you're married to or like, whatever it is. There's a mistreatment that happens sometimes. You know what Paul says? He says, don't you lose heart and grow fatigue. Why? Because you've been acting nobly. In other words, you've been doing what's right. You've been doing the right thing. Come on, Spike Lee. You've been doing the right thing. <laughs> you've been doing the right thing listen look at pastor doing the right thing if you're not careful maturity or immaturity will make you quit because I'm not going to keep doing right by you and you're doing wrong by me now listen let me put a time out here I'm not talking about letting people abuse you and then you say you think it's the Lord for you to get beat down every week I'm just going to keep letting you beat me don't be crazy. Don't go that far. Tell your neighbor, come on, you tell him you really need some meat. You hungry. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying when you're doing what God has called you to do and you're doing what's right, don't go back to stage one and stage two and you become fatigued. You're just tired. But pastor, you don't understand. I'm tired of doing this. I'm just tired. I get no respect. He ain't honoring me. She ain't. She don't honor me. And so, oh, man, I got to go here because I can tell some of y'all are sitting on pins and needles. I can look at some of your faces. This is happening right in your home. And I'm going to do this. And I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. I got to drop the bomb in this place this morning. Some of you all, when you're done wrong, you withhold yourselves. I ain't going no further. You withhold yourselves from each other because you're going to teach them a lesson. No, that's immaturity. What you're doing is you're acting like a stage one person. You are now controlling that individual by what you will not share with them. That should be mutually. Well, I ain't doing nothing until he apologized to me. And I'm not. Mm -mm. And all of a sudden you got a headache every day. Go left, young man. Go left. That's a sign of immaturity. Well, I can't separate what they're doing and then turn around and, and find some common ground when they want to find common ground. You better know how to separate. See, you've become weary and now you're fatigued and you're going to make them pay until they line up to your will. You know what the Bible calls you? The Bible calls you a witch. I'm just saying what the scripture said. The Bible calls you a warlock. You are casting spells. Because you're making sure they're going to do what you say do. And you will smile on the outside. But on the inside. You one of them little witches on the Wizard of Oz. Come on, Dorothy. That is a sign of immaturity. You've become so fatigued, you're not going to now do what's right and noble. You know why? Go back to the scripture. Go back to the scripture. Go back to the scripture. Y'all need to see this. You know, stop doing what's right. Look at right after the comma. But if you just mature and eat proper meat in due season, at the appointed season, 
You're going to reap what you were looking for if you don't lower the bar and succumb to your own control. See, when you're fatigued, you'll stop. Those of us who have played sports or been involved with some physical activity, how many know there's a point where the muscles are fatigued? But if you've ever played, sometimes you got to go a little bit beyond that moment because you, you, you're trying to get to that. I'm not saying stay there, but you got to push beyond the moment. And sometimes you need a spotter to spot you if it's benching or whatever it is that you're doing. You ever been, well, I better not say that, but you ever been on the wrong side of a fight? You don't give up. They may have gotten the best of you for a minute, but you better get off that fatigue because you may lose your life back over here. Sometimes you got to press hard to say, you, you, didn't, you didn't got the best of me, but this ain't over. And you know what you do to that enemy? That enemy say, oh, Lord, I, I, gave him my, I gave her my best shot, and this fool is still coming after me. All right, go on, man. Stop. All right, we done. Sometimes you got to go beyond the fatigue. Why? You will reap a victory if you learn to go beyond your moment. Oh, I feel led of the Lord to say this. I was about to move on. Some of you have done what's right by the children that you have by someone else, and they are taking advantage of you. Don't stop being a father or a mother. You're going to reap good. Well, I ain't giving it to them because they have enough money. That ain't your choice. I'm barely making it. That ain't your choice. May have been some bad choices, but that's not the point. Keep doing what's good. Well, I can't take my children where I want to. You don't understand the situation. Let me tell you something. You may not be able to take them to Disney every week, but you can find a park. You can find a Frisbee, a basketball. Don't become fatigued. Because you're doing what's right. But Pastor Shines, you don't understand. They're, they're, they're mocking me in front of my children. Keep doing what's right. God will open up the eyes of that child at some point, and they go, and guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna reap what is good. But you gotta be a meat eater to do this. Tell your neighbor, you can't stay in stage one on this one. Come on, touch somebody else and tell them stage one, you gotta leave that place. Tell them it won't work out well for you. Let me give you the last one. Let me give you the last one. And tur turn back one more time to Romans 12 and 3. I'm going to show you just another portion. But I, when he said this to me, I thought this is so interesting. Because he gave me all of, these, uh, <laughs> all of these attributes that come from a person when they're trying to diagnose and that sort of thing. And he said, another sign, uh, Bishop, he said uh, that you can see when a person is not digesting properly outside of the other attributes I just gave you, please write it down. It's called spiritual bloating. That means when you look at your midsection. Mm, I'm putting on weight. No, you just bloat it. Often it's a sign. I'm going to show you something spiritual here. It's a sign that you're not properly digesting. Because... Not only is it not going away, sometimes you think it's gone away, but then why am I, why am I still holding on? What's, what's, why do I see this? Now, I thought this was so significant. I was going to give you a different scripture, but I want to stay at Romans 12. I was going to actually take you over to the Gospels, but I, I want to stay here in Romans 12 for just a moment. Notice where bloating occurs. Anybody ever pay attention to this? Where's bloating? In what part of the body? Can I show you something spiritually? Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Speaking of being filled with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit speaking as he will. When spiritual immaturity is there, won't come out in the Spirit, it's fleshly now. So out of your belly then, according to Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, remember how the scripture says, for with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, for with his mouth confession is made 
Yeah, you remember that? So then, therefore, we confess what is in us. Well, when you are bloated in the, I'm talking spiritual now, people. When there is a bloating, it's a sign that you're not praying in the spirit, but you're in your own flesh. Please write this down. It impacts spiritual immaturity. Please write it down. It actually impacts how you pray by what comes out of you. In the spirit, I love this. Man, scriptures are just bombarding me right now. In the spirit, according to Romans 8, for the spirit knoweth, I'm quoting scripture here, for the spirit knows the mind of God. And he can touch when you're in the spirit by praying what God's, pastor, I don't know what to do. You're spiritually bloated. You, pray, you are praying your will. But when you're in the spirit, the spirit prays, according to Romans 8, the spirit prays in the spirit. Oh, God. He no the spirit knows what to pray. Have you ever been to a place you're praying, but you really don't know what to pray? You know the situation, but you really don't know how to pray in the situation? Have you ever noticed, those of you that have been, that have been really, really filled, you begin to pray in the spirit. Paul says, your mind doesn't know what you're saying, but your spirit knows all things. I won't say who it was. I'm here to protect them, but there's a member here. And this just happened in the last month. I'll just go, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. And they had become frustrated because some doors would not open for them. It just, I know they were praying. I know they love God. Wasn't even a question. But I also knew that there were some, some things that I felt that this individual probably wasn't dealing with, but God did not give me the right to deal with it. That's so deep. That's, that'll preach all by itself. And so when they expressed to me their frustration and how it was impacting their faith, I never told them until very recently that when I hung up, I went into an, I hung, literally brought open daylight. I literally got on my knees, laid across what I pray on, and I began to seek God for this individual that could not break through. They were, they've been trying to break through, they've been hindered, and they're now at a place that their faith now is being challenged. They're almost questioning themselves. In the spirit, out of my spirit, out of my spirit, I didn't know what the head issue was, but my spirit, the Bible says, touch your, touch your neighbor and say, your spirit knows everything. Come on, look at the other person sitting next to you and say, even when your head don't get it, come on, tell them the spirit knows it all. I begin to pray in the spirit for this situation, and hey, God, I feel your glory. And when I spoke, in that room by myself, I said, I now release out of my spirit the breakthrough for that person to happen this week. For several months, nothing but the moment, the moment the spirit spoke. I'm talking about having strong meat in you. See, your head will say, well, maybe they done did something. Maybe they came back in another life. Come on. I ain't talking head talk here. I'm talking spiritual meat stuff here. My spirit. Can I tell you what really happened? I got grieved when I heard what they were going through on that level. And especially when they said, I don't know, my faith is being challenged. And as a father... Forget about this pastoring thing. As a dad, how many fathers in this place? How many moms in this place? You know it as I know it. There's some things you don't want your children to ever go through. You'd rather take it yourself than to see them deal with it. Because you, you, you know you can overcome it because you done already overcome that stuff. But they don't know it yet. And I don't care how grown they are, there's still something as a parent, you, you just don't want them to go through but so much. Because you don't, as a father, mother, you don't want it to break them. That's what I felt 
for one of the members. I thought as a leader, hey, God, you got to move now. I knew the voice, hey, God, I feel your glory. I knew the voice of God. And when I spoke it after months of them going through, immediately that door broke and this thing changed. And now they're about to be blessed with more than they have ever had in their life. Listen, when you're spiritually bloated, you can't get here. Go to Romans 12. I'm ending right here. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. I gave this earlier. For by the great... Let's go to the N, uh, NLT, please. Let's go to the Living Translation. Same verse, same scripture. I promise I'll stop right here. Oh, I love this. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me. Let's stop right there. Look at that. Keep that verse up. You better know what authority you have. See, when you're walking around bloated because you can't let go of stuff, or you, you, you're just not digesting, you're not walking in authority then, people. You got to know when to turn them jets up. You got to know, know when to turn that fire up a little more. You got to know, hey, I don't need pastor to call a fast. I'm calling a fast. You got to know, hey, I got to let this, I got to get a breakthrough in this area. Something's got to change. And, and listen, listen, this ain't just about financial things. This is about anything that impacts your life. Your sons, your daughters, I don't care what it is. You got to let the devil know, hey, this, listen, I'm not, I can handle this. It may be hard, but I'm going to handle this. With God's help, I'm going to handle this thing. You got to know your authority. A person who's immature don't even understand authority. Because they're still looking for somebody to blame. They're still looking for the man to talk about. Somebody got you down. They got their foot up on my neck. Stand your butt up. Stop laying down for people to walk over you. It's the dumbest thing in the whole wide world. Stand up and be a man or woman of God. And let the enemy know you ain't walking on me anymore. I love you with the love of the Lord, but this is it. No more walking on me. This is it. I, I am not you. I'm not. No, it's not. You got to know your authority. Some of y'all keep battling. Well, I just guess it's the Lord's will for me to suffer all my life. The, the Bible don't teach that. You're acting like a child. I guess mama don't want to give it to me. I'm just going gonna, gonna to be mad every time I see her. Gave it to everybody else. Grow up. Get that bloating out of you. Because of the privilege and the authority God has given me, I, I give each of you this warning. Don't you think you are better than you really are? Be honest in evaluating or in your evaluation of yourselves. Measuring yourselves, not by each other, but how? Can I give you the last note? Write it down. Keep that scripture up for just one second. Please write it down. According to the scripture, every believer has been given a measure of faith. We all start in the same spot, according to Paul. All believers have been given a measure. <laughs> That's why I get tickled when I hear y'all sing some of these songs. Not here, but places. Lord, increase my faith. You better watch what you're saying. Because with every level of faith, there's another battle. And if you ain't handling your battle right now, Lord, my faith is fine just where it is. <laughs> you ain't ready to do that yet. I just, just increase it, Lord, increase it. Increase it, Lord, increase it. Increase it, Jesus. Y'all have an old Tyrian service. Increase it, Jesus, increase it. Increase it, Lord, increase my faith, increase my faith. Faith increase. Faith, I command you, be increased. Faith increase. Faith, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When you're walking in authority, man, that means you done heard something. When you're walking in authority, it ain't about what somebody is doing to you. It's about what God has said about you in that situation. It's not praying against that person. It's praying that the will of God be done even if it impacts that person. You got to know when to divide this thing. So bloating is a sign you're not digesting and you're still Carrying something. Everyone stand. We got to get out of here. I want to pray for you. I want you to hear my heart on this matter. Thanks, Thomas. I want you to hear my heart on this matter. This is imperative that you get it. Please hear me. Please hear me. Please hear, Pastor. Every one of you should have something in your heart 
that God has put there that he really wants you to do. If you were pursue that thing, I, I need to say this because some of y'all are going to get imbalanced here. Listen to me. Please hear me. Don't become, oh Lord, this is going to sound like a contradiction, but I got to say it. Don't become so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. Don't let everything be about you praying 10,000 hours a day. You better get a balance. This, will, this thing will take you out of here quick. Go out and take a walk. Go out and ride a bike. Do something after you've done the will of God. Find a balance. Oh, oh Lord, I should have said this earlier. Because some of y'all just, y'all just so ready to shut everybody down and get rid of everybody in your life and just lay on your face every day. Do that, but still have a balance. Go out and take a cruise with the elders. I'm serious. Make them pay for it. Don't go on it. I mean, Shanae got the money. Jerry got the money. They can pay for that thing. Go over each other's house and have fellowship. Hang out with them Romans. They, they eating all the time. They, you can't look at it and tell them. I don't know what they're doing. I want some of that. Find, find fun stuff to do. Go out and have a good fellowship. But don't forget about the meteor things. Have a balance in your life. Some of y'all need friends. I don't trust nobody. Stage two. Stage three people don't even talk that way because stage three people say, if I want a friend, let me show myself to be friendly. I better say that again. Pastor Shines, I love this church, but the people here ain't just ain't as friendly. That's you, honey. That ain't them. Because we hug and kiss y'all in here to death. And we do. So if I just don't say, everywhere I go, I don't seem to be able to get a friend. You stage two, that's why. You want everybody to cuddle you and cool you. Go out and make friends. Well, I can't find them in here. Get some friends, bring them in, import friends. I don't care how you get them, get them. <laughs> import some in. What difference does it make? You got to overcome. God wants us to do a great work, people. Changes are happening. I don't know about you. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to just go to heaven without accomplishing something on this earth. Fathers, mothers, listen to me. When your body is laid out in a casket and some officiators, your eulogists, they, they're, they're giving the last words about you. Why not start now to have a testimony that when you're in your 30s and your 40s, this is how you serve God. Build this thing up. Oh, I didn't get a lot of help there. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you repeat this with me? Especially those of you, you know you're not serving Jesus. You know that. It's time to grow up today. It's time to serve him. Say this with me. Say, Father, I believe that over 2,000 years ago, you died. Three days later, you were resurrected. Say, I believe the same blood that was shed on that tree still has power to wash my sins away. Say with me, Jesus, wash my sins away. Make me new today. Help me become the father, mother you designed me to become. Help me lead my children, my grandchildren, my nieces and nephews by my example into your house. Let me be known in your name that I've accomplished your will. Let it be said, I did your work in your house and I'll give your name all the glory. Say, use me. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. Put your hands together everywhere if you prayed that prayer. Come on. We hope this message has been a blessing in your life. To hear more inspiring, transformative messages, visit glorytoglory.org and make sure you follow and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.